WYZZ News at 9 starts now. A tanker truck flips over. A look at what happened and the problems it caused for drivers on the freeway. Plus, an accused kidnapper facing charges. We have the latest in the case of a missing Chinese scholar. My two children are very expensive. So, yes, it is very important to save a little bit ahead of time. And getting a head start on holiday shopping. The sales shoppers are looking to snag in the summer. Well, topping tonight's night at 9, a Mapleton Village board member made comments that some are calling racist. Good evening, I'm Lauren Langer. WYZZ's Melissa Rose joins us from our newsroom with more. Melissa? Lauren, Mapleton Village board member Alice Daly made comments during a Streets and Alleys meeting some residents are calling racist. A recording of the meeting was played during their board meeting Tuesday night. According to published reports, when referring to people playing basketball at the village's rec center, Daly said, quote, I'm sorry we had too many colored people coming to town on Tuesday and Thursday night to play ball. Mapleton's mayor, Carl Bishop, says he is completely against all racism and the situation is under review by the board. Now, Melissa, I understand other remarks were made during that initial meeting in May. Is that correct? Yes, Staley also suggested putting up detour signs to divert them from the area. But during their meeting Tuesday, Daly said she was referring to diverting traffic to a safer intersection to reduce accidents. The board's next meeting is August 8th. Lauren, back to you. All right, Melissa, thank you. Well, Alice Daly isn't the only area leader accused of making questionable comments. Now, last year we told you about a Peoria City Councilwoman, Beth Akerson, who tweeted about Black Lives Matters. In them, Akerson called the group divisive as one of the reasons that she said she couldn't support it. Akerson also tweeted, quote, all lives matter, tagging President Trump at the end of that tweet. Well, a story that we've been following from our Twin Cities newsroom. At least two Bloomington Council members are still undecided about whether or not to approve a citizen review board. It's designed to make suggestions about police complaints. Diana Howman and Karen Schmidt both attended tonight's monthly Chiefs Focus meeting over at the Bloomington Police Department. It explained the department's current complaint process. Now, Howman says that she's concerned about the divide that either decision might cause in their community. I'm meeting again with um, Chief Hefner, doing my research. Only about a dozen people attended, most saying they didn't think the city needed the board. Schmidt says that she's going to wait for the final copy of the ordinance to make her decision. In our next half hour, we'll hear from Police Chief Brendan Hefner. Well, the man accused of kidnapping a missing Chinese scholar faces charges. A federal grand jury indicted Brent Christensen for abducting Ying Ying Zhang last month in Champaign. The indictment says Christensen used a cell phone and the black Saturn Astra that Zhang was last seen entering to commit that crime. Now, investigators believe that Zhang is dead. Christensen does face up to life in prison if he is convicted. His arraignment is scheduled for July 20th. A Eureka mom's plea on Facebook goes viral after the traffic sign that her hearing impaired son relies on to stay safe gets stolen. 11 year old Ryan Fuller is losing his hearing that he can't always hear cars coming down the street. Now that's why his mom, Stephanie, says that her heart sank when she saw the traffic sign missing. She took her frustration to Facebook and it quickly got hundreds of shares and comments offering help. She hopes that whoever took the sign will hear her message and return it. I just hope that the message gets out. Just bring it back. The family says a local sign company is offering to replace that sign. Well, continuing coverage on a rollover crash near Bartonville, traffic is now back to normal after a waste tanker overturns. It happened on the 474 westbound exit off of Adam Street. Emergency responders raced to the scene after getting word that a truck that took too wide of a turn had crashed. The truck driver was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Well, turning to our attention to the state budget now, Illinois' credit rating is no longer in danger of being downgraded to junk status. The state was removed from Credit Watch by S&P Global Ratings. S&P says that while the passage of the budget won't increase the ratings, the odds of the general obligation rating falling won't happen. The general obligation bonds are rated triple B minus. House Speaker Michael Madigan reacted to S&P saying, quote, S&P's action today is a strong signal that the balanced budget enacted by Republicans and Democrats is an important step in the right direction. Well, funding for the Peoria Agriculture Research Lab is included in the Agriculture Appropriations Bill. 
Representatives Sherry Bustos and Darren LaHood made the announcement today. Now, the House Appropriations Committee included funding for the Ag Lab. Both Bustos and LaHood sent a letter urging the committee chairman to maintain funding for that lab. President Trump's proposed budget recommended the lab's closure. A lemonade stand in northern Peoria is spreading some holiday cheer. Ten-year-old Alani Shelton and her seven-year-old sister Zoe started the fresh beverage stand back in 2015. Now, more than two years later, they continue raising money this summer to buy Christmas presents in December for Toys for Tots. Because we're giving toys to other kids and tea sets. If you'd like to buy lemonade from the Shelton sisters, their next event is on Saturday. For more information on how you can donate, visit our website, ciproud.com. Well, if you put off your holiday shopping until November or December, it'll likely cost you time, stress, and even money. Tax advisory groups suggest one key to saving money is scoring in the off-season. Buy your winter clothes while temperatures are heating up. Financial professionals say the best way to avoid overspending on a friend or a family member is making a list and sticking to it. We'll hear from a parent that's taking advantage of some of these Christmas deals in July a little later on in the newscast. And uh, Chris, I, I'm going to get you a weather rock. What are your thoughts on that as a Christmas gift? I'm happy with anything weather, <laughs> even if it's just a rock, Lauren, especially coming from you. you know, we'll let you know how much longer we have to deal with these storms and when we could finally be in for some cooler weather coming up in just a bit. Lauren? I jumped out my body. You know what I mean? I mean, seriously, I don't want to get bit by anything. You know, I'm a big guy, but hey, you know, that'll take you down. A rat gives customers a run for their money. The viral video putting that business on blast. They came in slicing each other's throats, putting each other on their knees, dropping them onto the floor in front of a bunch of children. And protesters cause a scene at a Chick-fil-A. What they did that some parents say went too far. Plus, University of Illinois golfer Dylan Meyer will play in his first ever PGA Tour event this week. The Illinois senior is playing in the John Deere Classic in the Quad Cities. And he's been looking forward to his tour premiere for a long time. Our own Matt McLean will have more from Meyer later on in sports.